A weather tug of war is going on, and in the short term, the warm-up is going to win the day, but cracks in the armor are developing in the warm pattern, and signals are starting to mount that a return to colder weather is in the offing in the not-too-distant future. We're going to take a look at what that means in just a minute. In the meantime, it is a wild weather day in the plains as a very strong storm system brings all kind of weather hazards to your area. An atmospheric river event is still underway out west and more rain and snow are on the way there. In the east, you're staring down the barrel of that big storm system too, so you're not going to escape this week scot-free either. So we got a lot to look at, folks. If you haven't yet joined the team, hit the subscribe button right down below and ring that bell to turn the notifications on. I do these videos every day. We cover short-term weather. We look at the upcoming weather and certainly any big events that happen and we take a look at the long range as well from time to time. We're going to do that today just a little bit. So uh, give the content a like. Let me let me know if you have any questions. Put those in the comment section. Anything I can be in prayer about, please put those down there too. We are on our way toward 8,000 subscribers. Certainly appreciate all the growth and the support. You are looking at the alerts map, my friends. By the way, sometimes you get a little hype option on the video down in the comment section. If you get a chance, click that hype button and give us some hype points. It helps YouTube push the video out. Uh, but anyway, we'll look at this alerts map. It is lit up like a Christmas tree. It is festive for the season and... Uh, Got blizzard warnings up here in North Dakota. High wind warnings continue throughout all of South Dakota down into all of Nebraska virtually. And then red flag warnings and high wind warnings down here in Kansas as well. Wind advisories east of there and winter weather advisories across the Midwest. A lot of alerts out here continuing in the Pacific Northwest and over into the Northern Plains and Northern Rockies. Winter storm warnings, flood, flash flood watches continue in place and uh, certainly wind advisories in the east as we see this storm system move through gradient winds are going to be a problem over in the eastern portion of the country. That is what is going on. Here is the current radar and you can see snow falling, not all that heavily, but definitely with gusty winds, winds into the 70s in some of these areas here in North Dakota. You're seeing big time wind gusts here. 60s and 50s and 70s are uh, certainly a possibility through the day to day out here where those blizzard warnings are, but uh, that snow is falling into that very gusty wind uh, environment, and you're seeing blizzard conditions in northern North Dakota. You can see a couple of inches, maybe two to four inches of snow up here, and then that will spread into Minnesota as the day goes along. Heavy rain here falling through Iowa, parts of um, you know Minneapolis down south through Ames, and then through the northern portion of Missouri, and uh, St. Louis, you're just getting in on that. And we've got another return, sort of southerly flow coming out of the Gulf and bringing plenty of rain here to the south, East, and that will progress through the day and more rain coming into the Pacific Northwest, more snow falling in the Olympics and in the Northern Cascades. And that is what is happening out there. Look at the wind gust today. We are looking at gusting at 48 this morning around Bismarck, so close to 50 down here in South Dakota, 60s potentially over near Spearfish. Look at this uh, 68 mile per hour gust possible this morning. This is the forecast map, all of Nebraska, South Dakota. This will be spreading as we go through the day. It's still windy out here in the Mississippi Valley too. As we go through the day today, look how everything just sort of shifts to the east. Kansas, Nebraska, over into Iowa, Missouri, Minnesota. You're looking to bear the brunt of the wind as we head through the evening hours. It will taper off just a little bit, and we'll see that diminish as the system weakens a bit. But it is a very dynamic system bringing gradient winds in. By the time we wake up in the uh, – let's go here to the morning, Friday morning, over – I shot ahead a little bit too far. There's 8 a.m. Friday morning, and we're seeing gusty winds all throughout the east, particularly in the northeast, closer to the center of that storm. Going to find gusts routinely up here in this area in the 50s. By the time you get up in the morning and head out to work down here in the Ohio Valley through uh, the southeast, gusts 30s into the 40s are possible. And by the time we get to Friday afternoon, things are winding down out west, but uh, out, well, in the center portion of the country, if we go on out west, another system is moving in, bringing heavy, uh, some heavy rain and some snow out into the Rockies and more wind out there. And back to the east we go and look at Friday evening and that uh, storm system is getting out of here, but it is still going to be very, very windy. We're looking at uh, winds here as we get through the overnight hours on Friday, still gusting potentially into the 50s. 
uh, through the nighttime hours and eventually by the time we get through Saturday afternoon everything will kind of clear out in the east and we see things settle back down again but this is a very dynamic system very tightly packed isobars we'll look at that right now as a matter of fact there it is right there 984 millibar low right over northern uh, Minnesota big heavy snow band up here in southern Canada more rain coming into the west and certainly rain down here south of that system but look at this this just progresses through the day today we get into the evening hours seeing plenty of rain here in western Carolinas and back into the southeast band of low topped maybe thunderstorms here coming through the mississippi valley good thing we don't have any instability because this was a very as i said dynamic uh, system coming through and we're going to see um, a line of convection move through but it's not going to be severe for the most part high pressure will follow this and bring cold air in out of canada so we're getting another cold blast on the heels of this system and more weather coming into the pacific northwest heavy rain again with snow we'll look at those snowfall and rainfall totals in just a minute and as we get on through the day Tomorrow morning, you're going to be waking up and your commute's going to be very, very wet up in the northeast and also up here around uh, Northern California and, uh, and Oregon as well and uh, places up in the Pacific Northwest. But as you go through the day, Friday, get to Friday evening, Maine, you're the really the only one left with any appreciable rain out here upstate New York and into the Lee of the Lakes. You're finding some snow bands setting up there, so you'll get some snow showers there, maybe a burst of heavy snow, and then more energy working across the Canadian border will bring more wind back into the picture across the country, the northern portion of the country. And then look at that as we go on out through the weekend, another system yet targeted to come into the west again. And over time, this uh, rain will shift down into California. So from our friends here in central, maybe even southern California will get in on the rainfall action as we get into next week. Here's temperature profile. This is the two meter temperature anomaly. Okay, so this is how much the temperature is above or below normal right about where we live. And uh, you can see as we start out here this morning, we'll bring it into this afternoon and we're looking at uh, much above normal for much of the center portion of the eastern sections of the country. And then another blast of cold air coming in following that storm system. And it will moderate as it heads to the east, but that leaves us for starting the weekend at least a little bit below normal here in the southeast and in the eastern sections of the U.S. and another big warm-up for much of the rest of the country outside of the Pacific Northwest and another system moves through with another little blast of Arctic air and that will build down the eastern slopes of the Appalachians as uh, this is want to do over the course of the next couple of days and that will just continue through next week and we'll get another warm-up, another system moves through and another blast of Arctic air or cool air builds into north folks up in the northeast it is going to be predominantly below normal, not really experiencing the big blast furnace that we're setting up here in the center portion of the nation. And then uh, down into the eastern sections of the apps, we'll see some wedging that take place to keep us, uh, keep the uh, furnace a little bit moderated, we'll call it that. And then we get on out toward the end of the week and it looks like everybody kind of warms back up again. Now looking at snowfall totals, we're gonna check here and change the view and check out what's going to happen over the next couple of days through the weekend and look at that we're going to see snow really pick up as we head through friday this is friday morning we're already seeing almost two feet of snow in some of the areas of the cascades over a foot here in the olympics and then back into the rockies as well and we'll run this through the end of the weekend look at that almost three feet of snow by the time we get into Sunday morning. We're all at Sunday morning. Look at that, 39 inches up here. It is going to snow like nobody's business. Some of these snow levels are going to come down. And by the time we get on out through 144 hours, that is next Tuesday evening. Look at this, just 40 to 60 inches of snow. This is going to be a massive snow event down into the uh, Cascades down to the Sierra, Sierra Nevadas, you're going to pick up some snow too. We run this all the way out and we're looking at over 100 inches up here in the northern Cascades and uh, it is just unbelievable the amount of snow that's coming. Avalanche uh, risk is already very, very high in some of these areas, so you need to pay attention. And of course, flooding is going to be a problem where the precipitation just mounts up as we go through the weekend. Here's, we'll stop it at Friday afternoon, early Friday uh, around noon, noon time, east coast time. We're looking at several inches of rain already or precipitation already falling of course in the valleys it's going to be rain and in the high uh, higher peaks we're going to see a ton of snow run this out through let's just call it through um, christmas eve evening and we're already seeing six to as much as eight inches of precipitation in some of these mountain ranges out here and you take it all the way out to 15 days 
the hits just keep on coming. There's no end in sight as the pattern is sort of stagnant out here and you're just getting system after system rolling into the Pacific Northwest. And that is a ton of, we're looking at over 15 to 16 inches of precipitation in some of these higher peaks. They just really ring out that moisture as it comes in and the trajectory is just optimal for that. Here's your snow depth for Christmas. If you're looking for a white Christmas, you gotta climb up the mountains or either live right along the border uh, here for uh, for those uh, people that uh, enjoy snow on the ground at Christmas, although I'm not sure that temperatures are going to be all that great as we get uh, out that far, especially in the middle of the country up here in the northeast, you'll be below normal. But that is what is going on as far as the weather goes. Now we're going to take a look at what's driving the long-range pattern. I've got a couple of maps to show you here, and we'll get into that right now. We talk a lot about the MJO on this channel. It is the Matt and Julian Oscillation. A lot of times it is a big driver of the weather pattern, and especially in the winter time. And it is an area of convection that rolls around the Earth uh, near the equator, and sometimes it intensifies, and sometimes it diminishes, and sometimes it completely dies out altogether and reforms over here in a different area. And we graph the areas where it is on this chart that kind of looks like a circle and it's got these numbers these phases and where you want to see if you're a winter weather fan where you want to see the mgo live it's kind of out here in these areas phase eight one and two when it gets down here in the circle of death we call this thing it is because the convection is either very very weak and it's not capable of much influence over the pattern, or there's some conflicting signals. Maybe you've got convection in two different areas and the chart doesn't really reflect that all that well. And that's kind of what, been what's going on and it's enabled the forcing of the tropics to enact a pattern that is not all that favorable, even though the diagram shows us over here. What we'd want to see is this thing kind of get out here and, and pick up a little amplitude and be a little bit more coherent. And uh, maybe we'll see that over time, but uh, in any event, it's much better than seeing it in high amplitude in phase four, five, and six, sometime, somewhere over the maritime continent. So that's at least not hurting us right now, but uh, it's not helping us all that much either. Here is the European Ensemble mean out here uh, as we head towards Sunday morning this weekend. We see the big cold anomalies up here in Canada, big warm ridge that cor corresponds to the temperature anomalies I showed you a while ago. This has been a big problem. This at least in the modeling, this big uh, block up here over the Aleutians and the Bering Sea, it's allowing a trough to develop right here. When you have a trough out here along or off the west coast, it keeps the storm track at, by definition, you're going to get another ridge that kind of builds in like that. It's just wavelengths, ridge, trough, ridge, trough. Do you see how that works? That's how that goes in the atmosphere. That's what the atmosphere wants to do. So we got to move this big pig somewhere, and hopefully over time it gets knocked out of that place, and it will, and that will change the position of this trough. Just changing the position of that ridge kind of sets things in a, in a different motion in the atmosphere. Look at this. This is another area that we're watching up here around Greenland, okay? So that's what we're seeing um, right now develop as blocking up here near Greenland. And that's a good thing for the East Coast, but we still have the Pacific to deal with. The Atlantic side is starting to look better out in time. Here's your big ridge as we get on in toward next week. And uh, don't let the ridge fool you. There could be some, especially along the East Coast, there could be some cooler temperatures that persist here. So Christmas may not be completely torchy over here on the East Coast, but certainly West Coast is going to be below normal center of the portion of the country. The nation's midsection is going to be baking. But look what's happening up here near Greenland. We still got our pig ridge over here and a big trough in the Gulf of Alaska, but now we've got some big bright orange colors and red colors showing up near Greenland, even that magenta. And look at that. It just builds in and builds in. And what happens is when this big blocking signal, this is a west-based NAO, and that is a really good signal on the European Ensemble mean. And look at this. This is actually shifting away maybe a little bit. If we can get it back up there, this will retrograde under it, and boy, we will be cooking with grease at that point in time. And uh, look at this. Uh, we always cook with grease. We may be cooking with gas. Maybe that's the better analogy. But to look what's happening here. You get this big uh, block starting to develop and force the pattern. We get the storm track kind of going like this and being a little bit farther south, and you'll start to see a response of a, 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 a sort of a trough anomaly along the west coast out in time if this persists, okay? And so the uh, ensemble mean sort of smooths all that out and gives you sort of a general picture. Uh, we've got a new model actually called the AIGFS that just launched and now it is available to uh, for us to look at and it's just an operational deterministic run. I don't have the ensemble suite for this yet, but uh, look at this. So we roll this on out in time, same sort of time period we're looking at over the next two weeks. Look at what happens up in near Greenland. You get a big sort of block setting up here the tip of Greenland, and that helps to force. And, and by the way, this has moved over now. You see the big Aleutian Bering Sea 
block is moved well up north and it's allowing the uh, trough to kind of swing this way, which allows a little bit more of a ridge response out here. And now you've got a, an avenue to direct cold air along the border and more so into the United States. And you've got a hint of a subtropical jet kind of working in through here. So this is all good if it progresses like this. Now, again, this is a deterministic model. It's a brand new AI model that's been released here, the, G, the AI GFS. <clears throat> So we will continue to watch this and see how it does. And again, when we look way out in time, we don't really want to look at a deterministic model to, to predict the weather. There's too much error that kind of creeps in. And so we don't want to see uh, forecasting based on a two-week-out deterministic model. You look at ensembles to get a general sense of the pattern. And then as we get closer, we iron out the details. But if you want to look just for fun, the European actually has some storm systems continuing to cross the country. And look what happens out here toward the end of the run. Out here toward December the 31st for New Year's, it stalls because we've got a big block up here in Canada and a big uh, vortex or uh, essentially big trough kind of anchored out here, big low that's sitting off the northeast coast. It slows the pattern down. And this is where you get those big east coast storms. You see this, what's going on? It stalls out a system right along the east coast, helps it to intensify, and you get a big burst of snow into Virginia and North Carolina. I don't think this is necessarily going to play out the way this is showing. Of course, this is a two-week-out European deterministic run, so I'm not going to put any... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me, we're not going to put all of our eggs in that basket for sure, but if you start to see that big NA, negative NAO develop up there and the big blocking around Greenland, these are the kinds of solutions that you'll probably start to see more and more of in the models, especially if the Pacific starts to cooperate a little bit more. So hopefully that helps. We're seeing more and more ensemble suites now showing the development of that NA, negative NAO. And if we can start to move that pig ridge out in the Bering Sea and the uh, Aleutians, out of the picture, and there are signs that that is looking like that may happen too as we get on into January, we're going to be ready to roll for winter weather uh, in the center and eastern portion, maybe even the south, the eastern portion of the country here. So that's what's going on there, my friends. Lastly, up in space, we've been talking about that coronal hole stream that came off of this deal here. There we have it, our little G1 um, uh, geomagnetic storm. Not a big deal, but we've been watching that. Another coronal, coronal hole is turning toward us, and another set of bright colors are turning around the limb, and that is indicative of another sunspot. We don't have any sunspots that we need to worry about today, and uh, that's really it. That's all I've got for you. The last thing just to show you here is the uh, moon and all of that stuff. I like to show this from time to time. Where is it? There it is right here. We'll just do this right on the fly. Moon phases, and so there you have it. We're almost at a new moon waning crescent. The new moon is uh, tomorrow at 8.43 p.m. Eastern Time. So there we go. Next moon will be the wolf moon, January the 3rd. And that, my friends, is the show for today. I'll be traveling this afternoon. Uh, follow me on X. If anything changes, I will be posting there at Real Cold Rain. In the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Take care, everybody, and God bless.